Hi, Dave Smith here. This is the journal that I've been keeping. Uh, actually, I keep all kinds of things in here. Uh, I've been practicing drawing uh, a while ago, and that's in here. But I've been writing my journal for the 365 project in here. And we're uh, 28th of May today, and that's day 141 of lockdown three. It kind of appalls me that, uh, that the world can get into that kind of state, but that's where we're at. Uh, lockdown is scheduled to end on 21st June. Um, so a little while to go, the seems to be likely that it will end on 21st of June, depending of course on what the so-called Indian variant gets up to, but we shall see. Um, now, so this video is about my 365 project. Now, if you've been keeping up to the channel, you might remember that I introduced this really quite a long time ago now. Um, actually, I introduced it when I started, back at the beginning of January. Uh, but you might remember, I've been shooting this on this venerable F5. And I have to say, I love this camera. Uh, and I've been using that Silver Salts um, repackaging of the Kodak Motion 3 uh, motion picture film uh, on 35mm. And part of the problem with that is that uh, the deal there is that you buy the film and the processing and the scanning all up front. And it's 15 euros a roll, which I don't think is too bad. Um, particularly when you think that they're developing it and scanning it in that price. And the scans are, I want to say 24 megapixels. I think that's right. So they're pretty good scans. And when these scans come back, they come back with a really flat profile. A bit like um, uh, a log profile if you were uh, filming with your DSLR. And the idea is that that gives you a lot of headroom to do whatever um, manipulations you want to do with the characteristic of the uh, image. Uh, and I've found that really, uh, really excellent. So it did mean though, you get these in batches of four and it comes with a, um, with a token to get that batch of four processed, which you send back with the film. So I can only get them processed in batches of four in Germany, so it took forever. I've actually had this first batch of four back for a little while now. Um, I've just been swamped with other projects, but I finally got back to this. So what I'm going to do is just talk through some of the images as we go, and I'll, they'll, they'll come up on screen as I'm talking so you can share those. I have made um, a page on my website for uh, all of these. Now, before I go any further, I do just want to say that I am changing this project from 365. Um, during lockdown, it was great. Um, the gym was closed, so I've been out and about walking and took this camera with me and I could find something pretty much every day to shoot. But as lockdown has lifted and other things are crowding in, it becomes uh, really difficult to, uh, to take one picture per day specifically for this project. So what I'm going to do is uh, change it to, um, to a, a coping with lockdown um, uh, project. So I'm going to end this project at the point that the lockdown eventually does fully lift hopefully on the 21st of June. Um, and in that way, this will be uh, a visual log of how I've dealt with uh, lockdown. And uh, uh, I have to say, I haven't enjoyed it. And I think some, some of the images might, uh, might indicate that uh, to some degree. Anyway, so let's take a look. So if you want to see the full set for January, and we're just looking at January's for now, uh, and I will do another video for February, March, and so on, all the way through to June. But we're just looking at January's images, okay? So um, these, just a selection are gonna come up here and I'll just sort of talk through them a little bit. Um, so I took the view that 
one way to deal with uh, this project, uh, and you're going to see the first image as I'm speaking now, it was just to focus on my immediate environment. I've, I've just moved uh, into this house. I was living in China uh, before I came here. Uh, and I moved here during lockdown, during the previous lockdown. Um, so that was all very tricky. And actually, I bought this house without ever seeing it, um, which was which was a weird way to buy a house. But it's worked out nicely. It's a, it's a nice place. Anyway, I thought I would focus on the immediate environment that I'm that I've moved into. And so this first image is literally what I see when I open my front door. And I, this is a, a small enclave, a little, a little village, if you like, of terraced houses, probably once upon a time farm cottages. It's a very rural area here, uh, just on the edge of um, Bishop Auckland. So I open my front door and I see the backs of two rows of terraced houses going straight up. Uh, and that's what this first image is. And it was taken 1st of January, straight out of my front door. Uh, and I, I do kind of like it. Uh, then uh, the uh, next shot is, this is a very rural area and in fact it's uh, very um, historically very horsey. It, it's, uh, its connections with horses go back a, a long, long way. And uh, there, are, there are horses everywhere, you know, all the fields have horses, there are loads of them. Um, I don't know much about why they're here or what the history is, but there's plenty of horses. And you'll see several, if you look at this full um, set of images, you'll see uh, many examples of horses. Um, and this shot is just a, a shot of, some ho of a horse feeding. Um, then uh, if I move on, so January, uh, January 6th was day one of the third lockdown. Uh, and I wasn't happy, I have to tell you. So this shot is um, kind of uh, an, an allegory to that, I guess, to some degree. Uh, and it is the inside of my front door. Um, put the camera on a tripod and it's a one second exposure. Um, just shows the inside of my front door because uh, I was kind of a bit fed up. Uh, and in fact, uh, the next day, the shot I took was of a blank white wall inside the house. I won't bore you with that image, but that's how I was feeling about things. Um, now also, if you've seen other videos on my channel, you'll know that I'm due to start an MFA in photography uh, in September. So this next shot is just a, a shot of some of the reading materials that uh, that I'm reading to prepare myself for the project that I have in mind for that, uh, for that MFA. Uh, and so then, um, uh, so the, the, the next uh, image is also an indoor image. Uh, the, the gym had closed on the 6th and I hadn't quite focused on what it was uh, I, I was going to do about you know, exercise. Um, I've been going to the gym and changed my diet because I've been... Uh, uh, focusing on losing weight. Uh, so this was all very difficult. Um, but this next shot is uh, just some prints that were uh, waiting to go up on my wall. And these are, I don't know if you can see them over here, they are now on the wall. Um, but these are uh, handmade palladium prints that I made uh, when I was living in Sweden. And I've got some frames for them and put them up on the wall. Uh, and that's what those uh, those images are. Um, so then in, on the following day to that image, I decided that uh, I was going to go out for a walk every day. So there are uh, three loops that I can walk and the first just goes up uh, across the sort of top of the valley there and, uh, and back along this road. Uh, it was all very icy and snowy and uh, a bit treacherous so I just did this short walk to start with and this image is a view uh, of Close House which is the little sort of village enclave where I live um, across the Dean Valley uh, on that walk uh, and then uh, it was 
it was bitterly cold at this time. You know, we're right at the beginning of January. And on this walk, I pass a gate into a field and there was uh, a hay bale just outside the gate uh, and some horses sort of leaning their heads over the gate and through the gate to get at this hay. And it was uh, pretty obvious that the farmer had brought the hay round uh, but <laughs> couldn't really be bothered to hoist it over the gate for the horses. He just kind of dumped it right there and they had to sort themselves out. And uh, that seemed to be uh, a little bit amusing to me, particularly in, in the light of how cold that weather was. You could understand the farmer. Uh, so then uh, this next image shows uh, a slightly different loop. So if I go one way out of the house, I can do a small sort of one mile loop. If I go the other way out of the house, I can do a sort of three or four mile loop. And so I, I was extending my walk and I went out the other way. Now, as we go down my road, there's a small section of about uh, 50 to 100 yards where the road is a wreck. Um, Either side of it, absolutely fine, but in this particular little spot, it's full of potholes and it's a real mess. Uh, and uh, I happened to walk past a, a road crew making repairs and there was steam coming up from the uh, tarmac, the hot tarmac that they were using and it just struck me as a, quite a nice image. So that was, uh, that was this image. Uh, then let's move on a little. Okay, so we are sort of just after mid-January now um, and what I've taken, uh, I shortened my walk here because the pavements were treacherous uh, and what I've got here is a lamp post memorial, you know, one of those things, somebody's obviously died and sort of family have uh, sort of put this memorial up on a lamp post near to where they died. It's actually at a crossroads, so you can imagine that it was quite a tricky uh, situation. Um, but the memorial is quite, it's obviously quite old now, um, and so it's been there for some while. Um, so I took, I took that shot because there's clearly a story there. Okay, and uh, moving on, right, so what I had then done was uh, I took those two walks and I mashed them into one to make a really long sort of four mile plus walk. So I go out to the house and follow a very big loop around. And so I was going up the hill, down across the top of the valley, and, uh, and I come out at the other end of the road and then follow that loop. Unfortunately on this day, uh, it had rained really heavily and the road was flooded. It was completely impassable for uh, pedestrians unless you wanted to roll your trousers up and wade through which I didn't because it was really cold so uh, I basically turned around came back to this road and walked along this road instead um, but before I came away I stood and waited and I was waiting for a car to come through that flood so that the image would show just how badly flooded uh, that road was or how well flooded it was, depending on your point of view, I suppose. Um, then coming towards the end of January, uh, the snows had gone, but it was still very, very cold. And you get up in the morning and there was ice on the pavements and the roads. Um, and this image shows the, uh, the ice um, is being melted by the, by the rising sun. Um, but where the, sh where the, um, shadow of the fence is cast, the ice has remained and it follows the exact line of the fence. Uh, and that struck me as quite an interesting uh, image. So that's what this one is. Also on this walk, <laughs> I came across, there's a, a house up there somewhere and uh, they've got these double gates into a driveway and it says no parking and the pavement's dipped to the front. But above the no parking is another little sign they've had made which tells delivery drivers and postmen not to leave um, mail or parcels with neighbours. And you just know there's a story there, don't you? So I took that image. Um, and then I think the last one I'm going to show for January is uh, this one. Uh, now this was quite interesting. There's a, there are several churches uh, and churchyards on the route that I walked. 
and this particular one, <coughs> excuse me, um, I find I find graveyards to be incredibly interesting places. I have a book uh, that I made um, called the Cimetière d'Ixelles, and you can see this on my website if you're interested in that photo story. Uh, when I lived in Brussels, the cemetery in Ixelles is uh, very famous, and it's the last resting place of uh, some incredibly famous people. Uh, and it is full of really interesting stories. Uh, I won't say too much about it here. If you're interested, check out the photo story on my website. Um, but for example, Victor Horta, uh, who's a famous architect, has designed some of the mausoleums there and is interred in that uh, graveyard. So I find graveyards very interesting places for, for all kinds of stories. Uh, and I came across one uh, in this, in one of these graveyards, and it was uh, it was a grave and a, a sort of tombstone right next to the entrance of the church. So it's kind of in pride of place, uh, and it is the um, it is the grave of two young girls. One died aged four months uh, of uh, uh, sudden infant death syndrome, which I think we used to call cot death, and the other died at the age of four years. Uh, in a uh, drowned in a swimming pool in an accident whilst on holiday one Christmas. The first little girl died in 2000 and the second died in 2017, both from the same family. Uh, and I've just, I just found that to be a, a really tragic story. And this grave, right, it's sort of four years old now and many uh, graves stop being tended uh, relatively soon, I, I think. And certainly a lot of the graves in this graveyard were in, uh, in a poor state and some of those graves feature. Uh, but this grave was immaculate uh, and really beautifully uh, kept, um, as you'll see in, the, in this image. Um, and what a tragedy for that family. Uh, anyway, those are the images that I have to show you from January. It's just a small selection, and if you're interested in uh, the other images uh, that I made, then uh, check out the website. But that's what I've got for you for now, for January. February to come next time. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.